Colossians chapter 4, I'll begin reading in verse 2. The Apostle Paul writes to the church, Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. With all praying also for us, that God would open unto us a door of utterance, Speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in bonds, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt that ye may know how you ought to answer every man. Let's pray, dear Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your spirit. I thank you for your great love to us. Through faith, we do become uh, your dear children. And, and you favor us as we learned the lesson this morning. We're reminded of that. What a blessing. Dear, dear God, in that favor, which has been purchased for us through the blood of thy Son, I ask for the filling of your spirit that you would help me minister to your church tonight, or this morning, and that, dear God, that we would be edified, and that you would be glorified. I pray for my dear wife, fill her with your spirit, and, and uh, bless her this morning as she ministers uh, the word, dear God. Father, we do pray uh, for the youngs on their way home here. Bless them, keep them safe. Thank you for the word that's gone forth already this morning. Might we rejoice in the wonderful promises that we have in the New Testament and uh, the fact that uh, you are a giving God. You give more grace when we need it. We thank you. We praise you. Edify your church this morning. Uh, do the work in our hearts that needs to be done. Uh, be with uh, Sister Pat and her family. Comfort her. And, uh, and use this time of their grieving, Father, to draw them closer to you and to glorify your name. Father, we thank you for the comfort that, uh, that Ron is home with you. Uh, we'll go see uh, our brother soon. And so, Father, we pray and we ask these things in Jesus' name and for his glory. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. All right. <clears throat> The Apostle Paul wrote in verse 2, Continue in prayer and watch in the same, in the same way with thanksgiving. Some of you might have a, maybe a favorite show or two you watch on TV. And, and, uh, and one of the episodes says, To be continued. Yeah, you're all right. You know, I didn't know that was coming. I might not have, you know, you uh, have time to watch the second one, so I may not have watched that. But uh, to be continued, uh, sometimes we might be discouraged when you see something like that. But there are some things uh, in the Christian life that simply uh, need uh, to be continued. Uh, some things in life you finish, and they need to be done. There are endeavors that that must be finished if uh, we must get the job done, and. Uh, However, some of the greatest responsibilities in life can only be carried out successfully if we're careful to see that we never view them as finished. And, uh, and it's then, uh, in these things that we'll see, we'll find that strength you know, to do the things that God would call us to do. Uh, when we were working in this place, putting in the carpet and 
and uh, the baseboards and painting the walls and fixing things like that and doing the sound. We needed to get it done. We had a certain amount of time to get it done. And we got it done. And, uh, and we got moved in here. By the way, that's the way it's been with every place that we've gone here in town. Uh, if we move again, which I, I think probably, uh, I'm thinking will be soon, I hope, uh, we've pretty much fixed up every place we've been. And that's a testimony that we're leaving around town. Uh, that, that, that's a testimony for Jesus Christ. But more importantly, uh, we may have finished here, uh, uh, the work here got done, but, but guess what's not done? The preaching and the meeting, isn't it? We're still meeting, aren't we? It's still going on, and it still continues. And, uh, and uh, I'm thankful I, I went to a pastor's meeting. Brother Kaminsky had one up in Salem this past uh, Friday. I went to that and saw some of the pastors, uh, Brother Adams, and uh, saw Brother uh, Caleb Bickle, and uh, saw him, and uh, he, was, he was there. Uh, uh, Pastor uh, Ken and Dean is the president of International Baptist College. Uh, saw him. Uh, saw uh, Pastor Brown uh, of, uh, of uh, what's his church's name? Temple Baptist Church, I think it is. Salem, Salem Baptist Temple, that's it. And uh, saw him. I didn't see Brother So. He wasn't there. He was at the, one of the meetings I'd gone before a long time ago. But it was a blessing to see. Uh, I mean, there, was, there was probably about 20 or, or more preachers, independent Baptist preachers here. Amen. There. So praise the Lord. It is a blessing to know that there's new plans starting and, uh, and that the work is continuing. The gospel continues to go out uh, to Oregon, even though it's one of the least uh, church states in the nation. And uh, it's thankful to see that, thankful to see that, we can, that it continues. Uh, some things need to be finished. Some things need to stop. Uh, when, you, uh, when your heater's running in your house, uh, if it never shuts off, what do you think? You got a problem. That thing needs to kick off, you know. You get home and the AC is it, still running and you know you have ice cubes hanging from your, you know, there's a problem. You know, that thing needs to stop. You know, it needs to kick off. I came home uh, one day from a, we came home from a camping vacation and we hear water in the back of the house. What happened? A line had broke and the pump was just a running and a running and a running. And that's not good. That pump needs to kick off. And, uh, uh, and so some things, it needs to be that way. Other things uh, need to continue, don't they? Uh, matter of fact, I'm glad my watch continues. I expect it to. And, and if it doesn't, there's going to be problems. Uh, by the way, uh, when I went to my house, uh, that electric, electricity come into the house, I expect that to continue. And uh, now when I hit the light switch, I want it to stop there. I want the light to go off and come on. But I got a problem, what, if that electricity don't keep coming, if it doesn't keep continuing. And, uh, and we're going to have a problem serving God if we don't continue some things in our Christian life faithfully. We're going to have a problem being the church that, that, that Christ wants us to be if we don't continue in some things faithfully and uh, not put them aside. And we'll look at just a few of those that are, that are addressed here in this text uh, this morning. So I've entitled the message simply, To Be Continued. To Be Continued. And uh, to be a faithful witness uh, for Jesus Christ, we must, number one, we must continue in prayer. Continue in prayer and watch in the same uh, with uh, thanksgiving. We need to continue uh, in prayer. So we must continue with perseverance, uh, continuing in uh, prayer, following the very example you know, of, uh, of, of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, you know, Paul uh, uh, foresaw that perhaps praying is something easy to neglect. You know, uh, people are going to miss you if you're if you're not in church, and uh, and uh, uh, but sometimes things like prayer and Bible reading, which we do uh, in, in, in privately in a sense, uh, nobody's going to see that. Uh, at least we don't think nobody's going to see that. Somebody might notice a change in our life, uh, but uh, God sees it, doesn't He? And uh, and, uh, and, and and but we get it easier to let those things slide. We need to be faithful to follow the example of our Lord Jesus Christ. Not be uh, quick to forsake and forget the power of prayer. I think about our Lord in Mark chapter 1. 
uh, in verse uh, 32 and following, in Mark chapter 1, verses 32 and following, what has happened is Jesus has gathered a few of his disciples, uh, I think it was five or six at the time, if I remember correctly, and he is moving, and he is moves into, he moves into Capernaum. And it's on the Sabbath day, and he 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 preaches in the uh, in the in, in, in the synagogue uh, in, in Capernaum on the Sabbath day. Jesus does, and uh, and so uh, when he's done, the, the Bible says uh, he, that he goes to done preaching in the in, in the synagogue. He goes to the house of Peter uh, and Andrew in Capernaum there. And then in Mark chapter 1 and verse 32, the Bible says, And even when the sun did set, they brought unto him all that were diseased, and them that were possessed with devils, and all the city was gathered together at the door. And he healed many that were sick of divers diseases, and cast out many devils, and suffered not the devils to speak, uh, because they knew him. Now, I don't know about you folks, but that sounds like a long day to me. Uh, all day preaching and stuff in the, in, you know, in, in the synagogue and ministering. Uh, just having, you know, come from uh, uh, the, the Galilee area, Nazareth and stuff, into Capernaum, traveling. And now come, he comes where he's going to stay for a little while. And what's first thing? People gather at the door. They gather at the door. And what's he do? He spends in the, late into the evening ministering, healing. Doing miracles. You know what? It's time for a little bit of vacation. It's time to take a few days rest. Oh, we didn't find that for our look, 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 look at verse 35. And in the morning, what? Rising up a what? Great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed. That's how important prayer is. I'm sure here in his body, he was dead tired. But he needed that prayer time. He said, well, how did he find the strength to do all that? I suspect he prayed the, the, the day before the same way and found the strength, you know, to minister the way that God wanted him to minister all the time with that synagogue, to minister to all those people that gathered the door and do that ministry. He found that strength uh, through prayer and, uh, and, and through, you know, through seeking uh, his, his heavenly father. Uh, when he was... Uh, coming to Jerusalem for his last trip there. And he uh, knew uh, that his hour was come, that they would crucify him. And uh, he had that last supper with his disciples. In Luke 22, 39, we read, after the, that supper was done, and he came out and went as he was wont, that means as he was known to do, as he was in the custom of doing, he went out and as he was wont to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples also followed him. What did he do out there? He prayed. Uh, remember that? Remember that prayer? He prayed three times to the Father. If it would be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but thou be done. And uh, the last time he prayed was uh, that he had to drink the cup. He said, then, Father, thy will be done. And so uh, he prayed. He, he prayed. And we need to follow, follow that example. He was known to go pray. By the way, that's, way, that's how Judas knew where to find him. Uh, he didn't know where they were going to have the Last Supper. Judas didn't because Jesus kind of did that in a secret way. He told, he told, I think it was Peter and John, if I remember correctly, go into the city, you'll find a, you'll find a man carrying a pitcher of water. And he'll tell you where we're going to have the Passover. Of course, Jesus, he's wanting to betray him, so he didn't be able to look. Jesus was going to have the Passover, and Judas didn't know where it would be. And so he, so, so he couldn't interrupt that. But then, after the Passover, Judas goes, Jesus sends him out to go betray him. And what does Judas know? I know where he's going. Now he's, 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 he's been saved, and now he's, he prays, not of olives. That's where he's going, and that's where Jesus went. Uh, he went to pray. Uh, by the way, remember Daniel? No praying, the king said. What did Daniel do? Just like he was used to doing, went home, opened up the doors of his window toward Jerusalem, and prayed to his mighty father. And, uh, and we need to be a people uh, that, that pray, that pray, and pray continually. 
1 Thessalonians 5.17 says, Pray without ceasing. Uh, Brother Brian puts that on the prayer sheets that he makes for us sometimes. Pray without ceasing. We ought to be praying constantly. Constantly have an attitude of prayer. Ready to pray in a moment, in, in, in a moment's notice. Uh, ready to communicate with God. But you know, it's important that we have a time of regular prayer. I would ask you. I would ask myself, where are you want to pray? In other words, where are you known to pray? What is your place? Where where is your special place? Where, where is your special time where that's your manner and that's your custom to be in earnest prayer with God? Where is your time, my time daily? The Lord has impressed upon my heart and I, and, and, and I, and, and I have, have been praying more and, and laying aside that time. And we need that. It's that we desperately need that power that prayer brings. If we fail... We will fail in all the responsibility of the Christian life if we're not faithful in prayer. Uh, we'll eventually not study our Bible the way that we should. Uh, 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Study, show this self approved unto God. Uh, we'll not be in church as faithful to church as we ought to be. Forsake not the assembling yourselves together. Hebrews 10.26 We'll not be the witness that God calls us to be. Acts 1.8 you shall be witnesses unto me. Will not be those things if we fail to pray. If we fail to pray. We may go on and maybe have a show on the outside for a while. But that inward strength will fail if we're not coming to God. If we're not coming to God in prayer. The children of Israel had been disobeying God and Moses, which is nothing new. Uh, and uh, and they were in line for punishment. But one of the mercies from God and one of Moses to pray for them. And in 1 Samuel 12, uh, 22, I'm sorry, that's, uh, yeah, that's Samuel, not, uh, not Moses, it's Samuel, Prophet Samuel. Uh, they, of course, they were still disobeying, so the people were the same. Uh, 1 Samuel 22, Samuel says, The Lord will not forsake His people for His great name's sake, because that pleased the Lord to make His people more rest for me, God forbid that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you. But I will teach you the good and right way. I'm not going to stop praying for you. I'm going to pray continually. Prayer, folks, is to be continued. And we need to make sure uh, that we are continuing in prayer and perseverance. You know, the devil always tries to, always something comes up. You know, something breaks down. We have to set aside that time. We have to make that time. Uh, if, we're going, if we're going to be able to serve God in the fullness and power of the Spirit. And then we need to pray. We need to pray with purpose. Look at verse 3. Paul asked them to pray that God would open us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in bonds. You see, we need to remember the great purpose uh, of the Christian life is what? It is that we are to be witnesses for the Lord Jesus Christ in the way that we live and in sharing this blessed gospel. We need to be uh, continually sharing. That needs to never cease. We need to be continually praying, continually sharing, uh, uh, praying with purpose, praying for opportunities uh, to share the gospel with others, looking for opportunities, uh, creating opportunities as God uh, enables us uh, to tell others about the Lord Jesus Christ. Notice what Paul is asking them to pray here in verse 3. He says, I want you to pray uh, for a door of utterance and then the opportunity to speak. He says, speak the mystery of Christ, for which also I, uh, for which I am also in bonds. Do we understand that Paul is praying for more opportunities to do that which has brought him persecution and imprisonment in the first place. Uh, all, the, uh, all this heartache has come from the attacks of the devil on him for preaching and for sharing the gospel. And he's saying, and by the way, pray that God will give me some more opportunities. I don't know about you, but I can be instructed from that. How about you? And uh, how important that is. 
Paul really knew that important. You know, whether I suffer or not, it's more important that I share the gospel. If I, if I share the gospel, it's more important I share that. Even if more suffering comes, I still need more opportunities to do that. And so he was, he was set on uh, praying for that opportunity. By the way, he was no superman. His strength came from the same spirit that you and I have. The Holy Spirit was given to us uh, uh, at salvation. He asked prayer for himself in this way in Ephesians six nineteen about the same the same uh, the same issue about witnessing. He says he's asked and he says pray for me in Ephesians six nineteen that utterance may be given unto me. Here it is that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. Pray for me that I won't be afraid to speak when I ought to speak. Pray for me that I have opportunities. By the way, I can echo that, you know, and I'm sure we all can. And how important this thing of prayer is. Uh, how important it is uh, that we pray. <clears throat> because we know, uh, you know, that uh, we have the message. Christ, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Colossians 1, uh, 27. Just a little bit earlier in the book there. And, uh, and, uh, and so we pray because we have these things revealed to us. Uh, we pray for opportunities to witness. By the way, but like Dennis mentioned this morning, if you're saved, you have been enabled to witness about Jesus Christ. His Spirit lives in you. Listen to what 1 John 5.10 says, He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. You have the best witness of Jesus Christ living in your heart. That's the Spirit of Christ. The Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. He's living in you. And what do you suppose the witness in you longs to do? He longs to what? To witness. Uh, and and, and to, to live, yes, a life that, is, that, is, uh, that, it, that would uh, uh, make us believable. When we what? When we witness. When we speak forth the word or sign forth the word, whatever it might be. Uh, that's that spirit that enables us. <clears throat> Something, the purpose of prayer is that we might be delivered from all of our trials and problems so that we can enjoy our own little heaven on earth. That's not the purpose of prayer. The purpose of prayer is that you and I might have the provision and the strength and the wisdom to do the will of God that he might be glorified. Amen. That's the, that, that's the purpose. And by the way, joy, peace, all those things come as a side benefit of that. Uh, doing, doing God's will. If, 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 if we were focused upon God, I want to do your will. I want to be Romans 12, 1 and 2. I want to be uh, wholly surrendered unto you. We would find all those other things we're trying to seek. Well, I want to have joy. Well, I want to have my needs supplied. Well, I want to you know, have, have, have happy. Well, hey, that, those are side benefits of following the Lord. And, uh, and they come. And so we need to be earnest, uh, earnest in that prayer. We have to pray purposely. Pray for opportunities to share the gospel. The other believers, uh, and the other believers may have an opportunity to share the gospel. And uh, you say, well, preacher, I, I just don't have the desire to share the gospel. Then you have something else to pray about, don't you? Well, preacher, I just don't have the courage to share the gospel. Then you have something else to pray about, don't you? Preacher, I don't have the wisdom to share the gospel. You have something else to pray about, don't you? And thank God we can come to the God of all grace. It will help us and uh, uh, as we come to Him in prayer. We need to continue uh, in prayer, in earnest prayer. What else do we see here in this passage? We need to continue in prudence or in wisdom. Continue in prayer and watch. Be watchful of what's going on around us. Uh, look at verse 5. Walk in wisdom. Walk in wisdom. Uh, look at the end of verse 6. That you may know how you ought to answer every man. We're supposed to be growing in the wisdom of God, learning the scriptures. And uh, by the way, if we're praying for our priest to witness, we ought to be preparing for the time when it comes. Amen. Because listen, you pray that, God will answer that prayer, folks. Uh, God's going to answer that prayer. And so we ought to know, uh, uh, be ready to witness. And, and to be learning the things of God and to be growing in wisdom. 
Learning about God. Proverbs 2 talks about that, that kind of wisdom. About seeking wisdom. Uh, like you're mining for treasures. Uh, if thou seekest her as silver, Proverbs uh, 2, 4, and searchest for her as for hid treasures, search, searching the wisdom of God, learning what God's will is for your life, Proverbs 2, 5, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord, that's the beginning of wisdom, and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord giveth wisdom out of His mouth, uh, cometh knowledge and understanding. God will give that wisdom if we want to learn that. Proverbs 4, 7. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. With all thy getting, get understanding. Learn God's will. Learn what God's word says and learn how to apply it to your heart and to your life. And I like the way James chapter 1, verse 5 puts it so simply. If any of you lack wisdom, what? Let us ask of God, which given to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. You see that? God will give you wisdom. Well, I just wanted wisdom, you know, so I could be a better witness, but God could answer my prayer. I, I don't know if I believe yet. <laughs> uh, or maybe he's trying to teach you something else right now. Uh, but uh, we need to continue in prudence and wisdom. Why? Because people are lost. Uh, people are lost. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without. Toward them that are without. Uh, those what? That are on the outside. Uh, it's a tragic situation uh, for the lost. And uh, I thought, think about Brother, Brother, Brother Ron going home. It's really a time of, of, of rejoicing, Amen. in a sense. We have, uh, yes, there's sorrow, but we don't sorrow as the world sorrows. We're the ones that are sorrowful. We're the ones that will miss, the, the, you know, uh, Brother, Brother Ron. His dear wife is the one that's sorrowful, missing her, you know, her, 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 her love and her best friend. Uh, uh, she, 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 th that's sorrow. But listen, we know we're going to see him again. Amen. We know that he, that, that he, 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 He's not ill anymore, folks. He's with Jesus, amen? And, uh, and so we don't sorrow as the world sorrows. We have a rejoicing uh, uh, knowing the hope that we have. But the world doesn't have that. It's heartbreaking to think about that. Ephesians 2.12 encourages us to remember the time when we were lost. At that time you were what? Without Christ. End of verse 12, Ephesians 2. Having no hope and without God in the world. That's how we were. Uh, that, by the way, that's how Corvallis is. Everyone who doesn't know Jesus Christ as their Savior, they are lost. And they are without hope. And we need to have a burden uh, for their souls. And it doesn't matter uh, whether they believe or whether they don't, or whether, they, what, what they're, whether they're nice or whether they're, whether they're mean. Or, it doesn't matter. They're lost and without Jesus. And Christ can change anyone, anywhere, at any time. All they need is that life-saving message to be shared. And by the way, time and time and time again. And, uh, uh, and we need to be faithful in doing that. Uh, we were lost. Uh, and yet Ephesians 2.13 says, Yet in Christ Jesus, you who sometimes were far off, were made nigh by the blood of Christ. By the way, how, how near were we made? As near as you can be to God. What? And once you become a child of God, you are favored, as we saw in the lesson this morning. Ever in His favor once you're a child of God. And verse 14 in Ephesians 2 says, For He is our peace. You know why I'm going to heaven? Because Jesus became my peace. Amen. He took my sins and gave me His righteousness. And that made peace between me and God. And now because He ever lives in my heart, I am at peace with God as far as my eternal soul. I know that I'll be in heaven. And, uh, and the world needs to know that. Corvallis needs to know that. The world needs to know that through, uh, through our missionaries. You see, it doesn't matter if you have a good job. It doesn't matter if you have good health. It doesn't matter if you do good works and help your neighbor. It doesn't matter if you have good intentions. If it doesn't matter if you're good citizens. If you don't have Jesus Christ as your Savior and the Holy Spirit living in your heart, you have zero chance of entering heaven. And we need to, we need to realize that people are lost. That's why we need to have this wisdom. 
And uh, so th this wisdom must continue to realize uh, what the world is around us. Uh, John 3.18, uh, middle of the verse, He that believeth not what is condemned already. They're already condemned. The devil has them. And, uh, and by the way, that's on the record. John 5.11, this is the record. God has given to us eternal life. This life is in His Son. He that hath the Son hath life. What? And he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. It's on the record, folks. Mm -hmm. It's on the record for you and I have been born again. We have life. But listen, it's on the record for those who are not. They don't have life. And we need to give them that message. That life-giving message of the Gospel. Uh, people are lost. And they need to be saved. Colossians 4, 5 here says, Walk in wisdom toward them that are without. You know what that word toward means? It means to the advantage of. To the advantage of. For their sake, walk in wisdom. Look around us. What's important? And uh, have the priorities of our life in order so that we're living in a way that they'll count for God. Which brings me, uh, what well, Peter says, uh, First Peter uh, 3.15 Sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. Realize He's living in you and exalt Him. Put Him upon the throne in your, of your heart. Sanctify the Lord God in your heart, Peter writes. And be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Be ready to share that gospel as God opens that opportunity. Uh, I was at work. The... Uh, this past Monday, and uh, went into the office there, and one of the drivers was sitting. He says, "So, what was your sermon about on Sunday?" <laughs> well, five hours, five hours later, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I gave him a brief. Uh, I told him it was about it was, it was about the yoke. I said, I just briefly explained it. It's about how that when you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, He makes life easier for you in some ways. It, it, I mean, yes, the sermon talked about how the, the, how the law shows us our sin. We're condemned under the law. But, but if we trust Jesus Christ as our Savior, <laughs> uh, then, 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 he take, then He gives us the, the yoke of the New Testament and He forgives us our sins. And so we don't have to worry about going to hell. Uh, it was, I mean, you talk about praying for an opportunity, folks. Okay? Yeah. We need to look for them. Amen? Amen. And, uh, and, uh, and, and God, God will provide them. And look for those, you know, those... Uh, those opportunities uh, to share uh, that, uh, that, that that blessed gospel, being ready to give that. Uh, <clears throat> Why else we need to walk in wisdom? Because time is limited. Walk in wisdom uh, toward them that are without, redeeming the time. Uh, redeeming the time. <clears throat> you know what redeeming means? <clears throat> It means to buy up. To buy all that is anywhere to be bought. Make sure that we're using our time wisely. Opportune, what are some opportune times to witness? Well, in the deaths of family. Where have they gone? Where are they now? You know, if you have someone die, a loved one die, whether they're saved or not, that can be an opening to witness. Mm -hmm. Because you know we know this by looking at Luke chapter 16, which talks about the rich man in hell. He wanted his brethren to be saved. So you can say, you, if someone passes away, you can say, uh, you can say without, without any, any doubts, we, well, we may not know uh, about uh, uh, much about, I may not know about much about this person's life, but I know that where, where they are now, they would want you to be saved and trust Jesus Christ as your Savior. That's true! Whether they, whether they go to heaven or whether they go to hell. And, uh, and, and, and so that there's an opportunity uh, uh, to, uh, you know, to, to share that at, uh, at death. When someone asks why you're different, you know, well, I just, you know, I, I don't want to be faithful to church and, and I, I'm trying to do the best I can. Listen, don't use those opportunities to talk about yourself. Well, I, well, you know, well, you know, Jesus died for me. 
And so he said, if, he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And because you know, Christ, here we go, the gospel again. <laughs> and because Christ died for my sins and rose again, I believe that, that I owe my life to Him because I trust Him as my Savior. You see that? We don't make it all about our, ourselves. Make it about Jesus. Amen. Lift up His holy name and uh, look for opportunities. Make opportunities. Uh, you know, of that. How can you translate something into an opportunity to do that? Uh, why did you go to church? What did you do this weekend? Oh, well, I went to church. Oh. And uh, uh, anything exciting happened there? Yeah, you see, I heard this part and, and, and put the gospel in there somewhere, all right? Look for those opportunities. Uh, uh, you do a good deed for somebody. You help somebody out. And uh, somebody comments about that, you know? Well, you know, Christ died for me and rose, rose again. And so uh, we're supposed to be, as believers, we're supposed to try to do good deeds and help others. You know, you can, there's so many ways you can witness uh, something comes up. Uh, you, help, you help someone out. Uh, <clears throat> why? Because time is limited. James said, James 4.14, Whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow, but what is your life? It is even a vapor, what? That appeareth for a little time and vanisheth away. And folks, it goes so fast. It goes so fast. And so Jesus told us in Matthew 26, 41, watch and pray. It's not into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Uh, see, the days are evil. In other words, the spirit of this world opposes you and I redeeming the time, using the time properly, using it for the glory of God, witnessing as God gives opportunities. And here's the part we really have to be careful about. The spirit of the world lives in you and me. <laughs> it's in the old nature. It's in the old nature just to want to care about this life. Just to be all caught up in this life. Not to step out and, 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 and be about our Father's business. Amen? Uh, like, uh, uh, like our God wants us to be. Uh, we sing in one song, Is this vile world a friend of grace? To help me on to God. And what's the, what's the answer? Absolutely not. Everything in this world will distract you or, or try to defeat you or deter you and then I from, from, from serving God and being a Christian that God wants us to be. And, uh, and we have to be aware of that. Things that continue. Continue in prayer. Continue in prudence or wisdom. And then thirdly and finally, we need uh, to continue uh, to proclaim. We can say continue uh, to preach. Continue to preach the gospel of Christ to others. Look at verse 4, look at verse 6 in Colossians 4. Uh, verse 6, let your speech be always with grace, these with soul. That, that word, your speech there, uh, the word is translated from uh, from logos. It's that form of thinking which is thought through. We've got to have an answer ready. We have saw that already. We're praying for opportunities, be looking for them. Uh, we can even make them. Uh, and uh, as God gives us the wisdom and grace to do that, continue to preach, continue to proclaim uh, the gospel. And uh, in what way can we do that? By what means? Uh, what to say and how to say it. We need to keep uh, preaching and teaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we need to, we need to speak uh, with grace uh, comes from a heart uh, that praises God. If we're going to, uh, if we're going to have a, a speech that's always with grace, then we're going to have to be a people that's praising God in our hearts. Having that attitude of praise. That is a life experiencing joy and contentment in the care of the Lord. Uh, experiencing joy and contentment in the care of the Lord. And how do we get that? By walking within His will. Uh, by yielding our lives to Him. He, 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 uh, we cast what, all of our care upon Him, for He cares for you, the Bible says. And we receive that contentment, that peace that the world can't explain. And by the way, it can't obtain uh, apart from Christ. Uh, and so it will come as we walk with God. Notice he says in verse 2 here, 
in Colossians 4. Continue in prayer and watch in the same with what? With thanksgiving. You ever notice how rare that is in the world? How many of you go into work and you say, well, everybody was just thanking God for their job today, you know? <laughs> no, or, you know, you, you don't find that, do you? You know, we get a, we get a, uh, a, 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 uh, a, bo a, little, a bonus to buy a turkey or something uh, of, around Thanksgiving. They give us a, a check to, uh, to go to, uh, that's good for a turkey or a ham. You know, we go in there and, and uh, get that, and that, that's a blessing. You know, we go in there and they're talking, you know, uh, yeah, yeah. I said, well, it's nice, we, we, go, we have this gift to get a turkey. But, you know, the price has gone up, and, and they, they, they've, never raised, they've never raised it. It's always been the same certificate, you know, but the price has never gone up. So I, yeah. It's a gift. Yeah. I, I, I will, the, on my check, on my time card, I wrote the boss, oh, thank you for the gift. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And what, 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 what a blessing that is. You see, you, you'll find that in the world. Uh, uh, that thankfulness comes from, 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 from the Spirit within us, thankful to our God for all He's provided for us. And uh, speech with grace that comes from a heart that praises God. And then, finally, a speech that seasoned with salt comes from a heart that is purified by God. That is purified by God. That just means to be always with grace, seasoned with salt. Season with salt. Uh, Matthew 5, 13. Ye are the salt of the earth. Uh, the Bible says. We're the salt of the earth. And, uh, and by the way, he says, But if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall, ye, shall, shall it be salted? Suppose you buy some salt, and you put it on your egg, and it's not salty. So you go to the store and they have Salt flavor out of it. And you put that in your salt. You say, no, throw the salt out and get some, you know, if you, and if you can't, if you can't get the salt to taste some salt, where are you going to get it? And listen, if the world can't see God in you and I, where are they going to see Him? You know, the world needs, needs we need this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. That light of the dead was talking about this morning. That light of the New Testament. The light of the Spirit living in you and me. And the uh, light of the Spirit shining through us. Being that salt. And the sacrifices were to have salt on us. Every oblation, Leviticus 2.13, of thy meat offering, that's the grain, uh, shall be seasoned with salt. And this shalt thou suffer the salt of thy covenant of thy God to be lacking from thy meat offering with all thy offerings. They were offer salt. Salt purifies, salt cleanses, salt preserves from corruption. That's where you and I are supposed to be in this world. Because you and I are here, this world, the corruption of this world ought to be slowed down a little bit. Amen. Why? Because of, of the gracious words that you and I speak by the Holy Spirit and the lives that we live before those that are around us. And uh, they're not as comfortable in their sin you know, around us, hopefully. And, uh, and they have hope, by the way, to be saved. Uh, Ephesians 4.29, that no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace to the hearers. You see, we're supposed to speak words of grace and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and be the witnesses that God has called us to be. Examining, thinking about what we're going to say. Are we, are we saying the right things in the right way? Uh, with a, with, a, with a, a spirit of love and compassion and kindness. How we, how we need to do that. We have a wonderful truth to share. It's powerful. It's a living truth. Mm -hmm. And we need to be sharing that, that fruit. And we need to be watchful for that. You know, we have such hope. Uh, we have such a wonderful message. I was thinking about that uh, this morning in closing. Uh, but Des was talking about the Old Testament fading away. We have a great... The New Testament is so wonderful. Mm -hmm. It's eternal. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be forever calling upon the grace of God. Uh, and, uh, and, but I think about that, the message that we have. You know, Jesus said about John Baptist, he said this, Verily I say unto you, among, among them that are born among women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist. He said, what did you come out to see? You came out to see a prophet, didn't you? 
And he says, I want to tell you, there had not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Then he said this, notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. What was he saying? Amen. Listen, you're a greater prophet than John. Not because of who you are, because of what you had to tell. John didn't know about the resurrection. The, the least person in the kingdom of God is, I'm a witness for Jesus Christ. I will tell somebody, you have just prophesied something that John the Baptist never prophesied. And that made you, Jesus said, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. You're greater not because you're a greater person. You're greater because you've got a greater message. And so what you speak is greater. When you tell somebody how to be saved, how to trust Jesus Christ as their Savior. And we, we want to be continually doing that. Uh, Seeing with them we have such hope uh, in, uh, in 2 Corinthians 3.12 it says about this New Testament covenant. Seeing them we have such hope we what? Use great plainness of speech. You know if you're born again? If you're saved? You can tell somebody else how to be saved. You know why? Because they get saved the same way you did. Even in your own words you can tell them. You, I mean, you, you can do that. And we need, to be, we need to be faithfully and continually doing that. I would have no confidence in my heart if we as a church were not continuing in these things. I would have no confidence that our church would continue. Why, why would I? This is what God wants us to do, isn't it? This is what He has for us going forward. And so, uh, I, I want that confidence. Amen. I want to know that, 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 that we're reaching out to those that are around us. You know, as, as a church, we're taking the gospel. You say, well, preach why they don't listen. That doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. Our, our, we, we can't make people listen. Uh, I wanted to uh, listen to an evangelist uh, the other night, last night when I was exercising. And he, he was preaching. He says, he said, he, he was talking about his preaching. He said, he said, he said, uh, he says, I'm not a church builder, I'm a preacher. Christ is the church builder. Mm -hmm. And that's true. Yeah. We're not church builders. We're witnesses. That's right. uh, the, the, those who hear and believe get saved. The, those who hear and reject remain lost. It's that simple. And God expects us to be faithful sharing that message. It doesn't matter who receives it and who doesn't. We can't, we can't affect that part of it. You see what I'm saying? All we can do is say, God, I want to be doing what I can do in getting the message out. You know, uh, if, if everybody, if every person in, Cor in Corvallis uh, rejected it and was said I rejected it, I would want to give them the gospel if we went through the city one, two, three, four times, every, uh, faithfully until Jesus comes. And it doesn't matter. And then I can look to God and say, God, I expect, I, I'm looking for blessings. Because I believe we're walking in your will. I'm looking for blessings because I believe we're doing what we can do. And that's our, our Father. His commands aren't grievous, aren't grievous, are they? No. And, uh, and I'm thankful that he, that he, and by the way, my experience has been, and I'm sure you testify the same, he's given more than I could imagine. He's been, his mercies have been, uh, to me, have been greater than I've than I deserved. Mm -hmm. I, I know that in my life. And, uh, and we have a wonderful and a loving God to serve. And we need to be as Jesus was, even at an early age, about his business. Amen. Heavenly Father, I thank you this morning for this church. Father, I thank you for uh, the way you have allowed us to serve together. And uh, I pray that in our personal lives and in our, in our lives as a church corporately, you would give us more opportunities to share the gospel. And Father, I think of a building, uh, Lord, uh, perhaps that we can get into, have a little bit more room, especially for a children's ministry. A children's church would be a wonderful thing. I, I have a CDL. We have others in here that have a CDL. And, and who knows what could be ahead for us, God. I'm, not, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm looking to what you might do in the future. Father, be a wonderful thing. Father, we have family members perhaps that we can talk to, neighbors, co-workers, dear God, that we can begin praying for and praying for the opportunity, God. Uh, we're still here because you're not done yet. And uh, there's another that needs to hear the gospel. There's another that may be saved and grow in you. 
And so, Father, help us uh, to continue in these things. We look ever to Thy, uh, to thy uh, guidance, thy, uh, thy blessing hand. So, Father, help us to be careful to thank You and praise You. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.